Steam Deck OLED. More like Steam Deck for men. <laughs> I don't even get it. Kevin, can you explain this to me? I don't even understand what just happened. I thought I thought we were going with Steam Dick, so I don't... <laughs> ah, fuck. I... <laughs> what happened to Steam Dick? I choked. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's start the show. <laughs> Step into video game land. Welcome to Fine Time. <laughs> Hello, party people, it's your boy Dre, it is the fine time, it is the Steve with the bad jokes. Look, they don't all work, okay? If you if you hooked us up with some of that sweet, sweet uh, Patreon money, you know, I can, you know, maybe spend more time on this. Wow, we don't have a Patreon, Kevin. What up, what up, what up? Woo woo! <laughs> That's not going on our Patreon. We don't have. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you told me. You told me I need more enthusiasm for the intro, so I'm doing my best. Well, hey, it's better than what we got up front. I'll, t- I'll tell you that much. All right. Well, <laughs> I don't know how much enthusiasm you guys might have for this, but I wanted to take a good long time here. I don't know how long to talk about the Steam Deck OLED that I got. About a month ago now. Now, I mentioned this because a couple episodes ago now, Kevin, you did, what is it called? The Retroid? Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. Yeah, and you did a long, big thing on that, and I really enjoyed hearing the ins and outs of that hardware. So I had to go and, go and one-up me, get a much more impressive machine. Yeah, I had to, I I had to, <laughs> had to show, you, show you up. I had to get the Steam Deck <laughs> OLED. Um, and I had been thinking about getting one of these for a long time. And I finally did because tax return. So uh, let's let's start here. I'm sure a lot of what I'm about to say today about Steam Deck won't be revelatory to people who already own a Steam Deck or people generally aware of how this stuff works. But I think there's a lot of people like me who are console gamers, but also like Steam Deck curious, as I was for a long time. Let's put it that way. Steam Deck curious. So I figure my review might be worthwhile to console people who might be thinking of a device like this, you know, as a good way to play some PC games or stuff that they can't get on their Switch or PS5 or whatever they have. Or even if they can, they could play it in a different format or a bit sometimes better format if we're talking about Switch. So that's the perspective I'm going to be speaking from today as I talk about this. So I got the Steam Deck because I've never, ever been a fan of playing games at the computer. I've only ever done it when it's absolutely necessary. It's not just the keyboard and mouse thing. It's really just the act of like sitting there and playing a game like hunched over my laptop. So something like Steam Deck is perfect for me, especially since the games I want to play don't require any real power. I don't want to sit here and play fucking or The Last of Us Remastered on on Steam Deck. I'm obviously not going to do that stuff. I have a PS5 for that type of shit. So this is going to be for other type of shit. (laughs) <laughs> there's that type of shit and other type of shit you got it those are the two categories <laughs> you're gonna have to put up an infographic on twitter when we release this so it's <laughs> oh, yeah. nice and clear and then the shit spins around in a big neat circle <laughs> <laughs> you know what my favorite one is is like it's like the blue and yellow one it says blue no and then yellow says no but in yellow yeah. <laughs> it's like the same <laughs> um So, okay, so I opted for the 512 gig Steam Deck OLED model for $549.99 US dollars. There's a one terabyte version for $649, but I just didn't feel like I needed that. Plus, this thing has like an SD card slot, so it's not, I don't know, if I really want more space, I could always just add it. But yeah, I got the deck and I got the Steam Dock. 
I guess more on that later if you guys want to hear about it. I, I you can AMA me about the Steam Doc. I don't really have anything in the notes. It, it does exactly what it says it does. Is is the doc as as seamless as as Switch or is it? Because I, I talked about that too with the Retroid. Like it's it is not a Switch like experience. Is this you plop it in, you can grab a controller and off to the races, or is there some nuance and fuckery to it? Um, not really. The only difference is like you really it doesn't you can't just slot it in. It doesn't go from the bottom. It goes from the top. You have to put it in the cradle and then plug a thing into like the USB C slot. And then it'll pop on your TV. Um, I thought it was weird to buy physical products from Steam itself. Like you have, like you use like the Steam, like where you buy games or whatever. You just search up Steam Deck. You can buy a Steam Deck. It's weird. I thought you would have to go to some other like weird website for it. And I got the standard Steam purchase email. Like these items have been added to your library. Like Steam Deck and Steam, as if I could like three D print them or something. It's like why? Why? Are, well, how have they been added to my library? I, I think you should be able to, right? They sell you the licenses. You 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 bought Steam Deck components. You should be able to print them out at home now. <laughs> whether, whether or not they'll be able to operate is on you, but you know, I, I, well, let me let me transfer uh, my Steam rights to Kevin up there so he can three D print <laughs> me my deck and just send it down to me. I mean, that sounds that sounds wildly inconvenient, but that yeah. is exactly how three D printing works. Yes, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let me just give that on to you. So let's just talk about the hardware itself. Some. Folks, this is a really premium product. Like I said, this thing cost me $550. It's it's worth it. When you take it out of the box, it's inside of its own carrying case and everything, like a hard carrying case. Not like super duper hard, like it's made of like metal or something, but definitely not a soft case. It's, it's So it comes with a case. And as you open up the case, this thing is fucking huge. Like, I, I was just not prepared for how big this would be. I know we're past the days of handhelds of like, you know, video games in your pocket or whatever. I, I understand we're past that. At the same time, I was not prepared for how big this was until I actually held the goddamn thing. Like, so I think it's important to say that it's big, but it's not bulky. Kevin, which subverted my expectations. I was expecting this to actually be bulky, like a Game Gear or something, or like a mm-hmm. Nomad, you know, like a Sega Nomad. Could Steve play this on the bus? <laughs> Steve can definitely play Steam Deck OLED on the bus. Oh, yeah, it's not too bulky but I can't for the put, bus. But I would need a ba- another bag to carry it in, so it doesn't sound like I could bring it on the bus. My brother in Christ, I just told you it comes with its own <laughs> carrying case. Yeah, but I I'm not going to walk around you. with a little briefcase that has my Steam Deck in it. I already don't. If I'm not what? doing that for Switch, what makes you think I'm doing that with a Steam Deck? <laughs> what's, what's, who cares? It's cool. And it has, it has the Valve logo on it, too. Everyone knows you're carrying around a Steam Deck. Great, I can get mugged <laughs> twice as fast then. <laughs> as if anyone knows what that is, but fucking nerd. <laughs> um, Head over to your Steam Deck, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, uh, what's a villain uh, from Smurfs? Smurfs. Uh, Gargamel. Oh. Gargamel. Yeah, yeah. Gargamel. That's what I was thinking. He would covet your Steam Deck. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, it's 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 thick on the grips, thick with two C's. You know, it feels great, but then the the middle part with the screen thins out, so it's only big on the sides. You know, so you can grip for for someone with big hands. It's great. Is that a, is that a big improvement, like hand fatigue wise, from the Switch? Because definitely, I get yeah. If I play the Switch in handheld for you know hour and a half, two hours, I, I get a little crampy in the thumbs. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm I'm the type of Switch player. I like to use the kickstand and just hold the Joy-Cons. That's kind of how I usually play when I'm out. I don't usually do handheld too often. Be that as it may, yeah, I would say this is a better, like, if I'm going to play a game for two hours and hold the system, I for me, Steam Deck is more comfortable than probably Switch, mm. I would what say. What about weight-wise? Does that get a, to be a little bit much after a while? Um, not for me. It's, it's, I don't see. I, I hesitate to describe it as heavy. Like it ain't light. That's for sure. But I didn't pick it up and be like, oh man, this thing is, oof. 
What, what about in comparison to the Wii U gamepad? Is it heavier than that? Because I never thought that was heavy, but a lot of people are like, oh man, the fucking Wii U gamepad. It's, it's as big as a house. I, well, as you well know, it's one of the few things I like about Wii U is that I do like the gamepad. I think it's stupid, but I actually do like holding it and, you know, using it. And I would say it's a, it's a little heavier than that. And if you if you are the type out there to like to use a Wii U gamepad, it's probably comparable to that. The button layout on the Steam Deck is based on Xbox, which is a good call since Xbox controllers have essentially been the de facto like standard PC controller since like the 360 days. So like, you know, that's obviously a good call. And it has that layout with the X and Y and A and B, the Xbox way and not the Nintendo way. But never fear, Nintendo people, if you really can't get used to that, there's actually an option buried in there that says use Nintendo layout, which will swap the positions of X and Y and also A and B. If that is something you desire, you Hooray, can do that. Super Nintendo superiority. <laughs> it actually super. says Nintendo. It doesn't just say like swap uh, A, B, X, Y. It literally says the word Nintendo. Uh, yeah, that's kind of surprising. Yeah, I don't know why we're all pretending like, you know, that, that this that the way they do it is super different when they it was that way for a decade before Xbox showed up. <laughs> Because that that's become the standard now, especially on PC. Like that is the, the, the you know using a you know Switch Pro controller or something isn't. I mean you can right, and that's also the cool thing when you use. Well, I was going to say when you use the dock, but I guess you can hook up a, a Bluetooth any Bluetooth controller at, at any time. I haven't tried the Nintendo Pro controller, but I have used the DualSense, and it does change the UI layout to like PlayStation symbols. So it does oh, recognize wow. it fully. Yeah. Like the PlayStation button and pressing square X or whatever. So, yeah, that's pretty slick. Yeah, that is cool that they have that. I would assume it does the same for a Nintendo Pro controller. And I assume all these companies play Dice of Steam because why not? Who gives a fuck? Right. Why? Why cock block them on that? And there are four paddles on the back, like two under each grip, like big buttons you can press. What's that? I think like one of the Xbox like controllers that costs like two hundred bucks has that. Oh or yeah, something. like the Elite mm. controller. Yeah. What's the you, What's the like the one Call of Duty people love? There was the like <laughs> specific brand that had the paddles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Wait, I, I know the one, but not Scott's controllers. That's that's what I was yes. thinking of. Yeah, but these are these are technically other L and R buttons. They are L four, L five, R four, and R five on the back. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of wild, and you can assign these to whatever you want. In some games, I assign it to be just an easy screenshot button if I know I'm going to be taking screenshots of it. Um, I was playing Lost Planet the other night, and it's fucking stupid in that game. The way you roll, the way you dodge roll is that you hold L3 and then press A. What? I'm not holding the stick in and pressing a face button. So I just (laughs) map those two inputs to a back paddle, and now I can dodge roll the press of a button. Thank you, Capcom. You could have a uh, you could have a uh, L five registered to like hide your um, big titty anime games, and then R five <laughs> to like pop it back up when your mom walks away. <laughs> I think the Gal Gun games have that actually built into the game, like even on console. <laughs> I think they Did have you just that. switches to a biography of Picasso. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like fake homework or something. <laughs> R2 brings up spades when they stop believing in biography of Picasso. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd rather play spades, honestly. So let's get to the screen. Obviously, it's big. It's beautiful. It's OLED. It's exactly as advertised, as good as advertised, I should say. But, and I think this might be slightly controversial to some people. I don't think OLED is a game changer to the point where people should like upgrade over what they already have for a TV. Sure. Like absolutely. That's a bit different. Cause that's like a huge screen. And I think that makes a much bigger difference for a handheld man. I remember. Okay. So like Vita launch Vita's had OLED, right. And then like later ones didn't have it. I, and I remember people being like, Oh, these look like shit. I remember looking at my launch Vita side by side with a new one that my friend had. I was like, yeah, okay, my screen is better, but it's not like so much better where I'd be like envious if I had the other one, you know, (laughs) 
That's that's just how I what? What's so funny? Screen envy? My, my, my screen's better, but it's not, you know, better. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. no, you can you can still wave that around in front of your girlfriend. She won't leave you. Yeah, yeah, it's fine, you know? Yeah, it's not a, it's not as good as mine, but you know, don't don't be embarrassed about what you got, you know? For sure. Yeah, she'll she'll be totally fine with it. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> but yeah, that's. That I mean, do you agree? Do you agree, Kevin? Like, yeah. When I when I got the Switch OLED, I, I kind of felt the exact same way. And there's definitely times playing. When I played Mario Wonder. There's a few times, and I just kind of stopped and I thought, oh, this this looks really good on this screen. But it's definitely not something that I'm consciously thinking of every time I'm playing something in in handheld. And it's really, yeah, d- definitely um, in that case as well. I would say it's not not worth like going out and buying a new console just for the OLED screen because it's it's great to have but it's definitely not a not a must have as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it's cool and like I said I I, I looked at the Steam Deck OLED and the my launch model Switch side by side, you know, playing something rel- relatively similar and I'm like I don't know, still looks fine on Switch. Yeah, it's better, but your girlfriend again will be fine with it, Steve. So let's talk software and general compatibility, like how these games actually run on Steam Deck. So the interface is really nice. You can say that it's built off of the look of the existing Steam storefront and obviously uses a version of that store to display nicely on, you know, a handheld unit. And it's nice and snappy, all that stuff. Um, You know, you can see your options, your downloads, all that OS level stuff is really good and so it does you at any time you could press the steam button on the left side and bring up like a menu of stuff of like options library you know etc so it does a lot to like consoleize a lot of that experience for you which i think is good if something runs on steam deck but it has like some less than optimal settings or aspects to it that may not work well on steam deck the store will tell you so it says this works but the game might have text that's not easy to read because it's not made for a small screen or this game might show inputs that don't correspond to your controller that you're using or you know stuff like that it may show xbox inputs when you're actually using you know whatever in in addition to those warnings when you launch the game you might get like a splash screen that says something like hey this game is going to make you use the keyboard to enter some stuff and it's not going to come up by itself so to bring up the keyboard you have to do this or that and to and actually to bring up the saw keyboard anytime you hold the steam button and press x i would never know that it's a double input. So like, I'm glad that they told me that before you launch the game. And I'm glad that Valve is like conscious of that kind of thing, right? Because people are going to be like, how the fuck do I open the keyboard on this? Oh, thank God. We could play Zork on the Steam Deck. We can play Zork <laughs> in, in DOSBox on Steam Deck. No, that would frustrate the hell out of me where it's like, you know, enter your name. And it's like, well, can I enter my name, please? I don't, I can't, I, you know, yeah. So I'm glad they tell you that kind of stuff beforehand. But here's the biggest thing I want to say to console people who are thinking about this kind of device. A Steam Deck is not a console. It's never going to be. At its heart, a Steam Deck is still a PC. And that means it's not always going to just work, as I'm going to talk about in a sec. Valve has taken great, great strides over the years to alleviate as much of the shit as possible with like Steam Big Picture. I don't even use Steam on the computer without using Big Picture. That's the only way I use it. And controllers automatically mapping to stuff. Like, you know, Valve has done great about figuring all that stuff out. But occasionally stuff will simply not work for one reason or another. So therefore, the headaches that come along with PC gaming still do exist on the Steam Deck. So just keep that in mind if you're going to get something like this. Yeah, and I wanted I wanted to ask a little bit more about that. I'm trying to think of the right way to phrase this as far as like that OS and kind of the options you have being restrictive. So I guess on on one hand, would you say that this is is in in ways better than a console experience because you have the like granular options to go in and and fuck with stuff at a PC level, but you also have the you know big fit picture mode interface available? Or on the other side, is it kind of like? the worst of both worlds where you've got the like 
PC like jank issue things, but then you also and it, you know you have to like go in and like fuck around with desktop mode for certain things and like is it like w- worth the squeeze in comparison to like an actual console experience? Um, that's a really good question. I think it's more akin to the first thing you said. I think it's it's definitely not the worst of both worlds. I'll say that it's more like, but I also wouldn't say it's the best of both worlds either. You know, it's it's very cool. Basically, a lot of this, a lot of that PC stuff is a lot more tolerable on the handheld because at the end of the day, you're playing this on a handheld device that was never meant for this kind of stuff and wasn't really planned for it. Now games might take Steam Deck into account and have Steam Deck settings or whatever. But yeah, you're right. I can go in and play. What's a good example? You know, the PS4, early PS4 horror game, uh, what's it called? Under, it, it's getting a PS5 remaster soon. Until dawn? Till, until dawn. Now, I don't know if that has a Steam version, but if it did, I could probably run that better on here on the Steam Deck than I could on a PS4, right? Because the resolution isn't going to be as much. The max resolution of a Steam Deck is 1280 by 800. So there's no point in turning it above that. Obviously, a PS4 is going to try to run that at like 1080p. It's going to have all these effects on at 30 frames a second. What if I want frame rate? I'm a frame rate whore, right? So I can turn all that shit off and I could probably get the 60 the way I want. You know what I mean? So that's to me like that's a big appeal to Steam Deck for someone who cares about performance. Mm-hmm. I can go in and do that because you were talking about like, you know, settings and stuff like that. That's the kind of stuff I would use it for. Obviously, I'm not going to try to do it beyond a PS4. This the system can't handle that. But if I want I can run the game the way I want to run the game of of something like that, that's. That would be excellent. Now, obviously, I'm not going to do that. There's a PS5 version coming out there that's, you know, I'm going to play that. But as an example of what you were talking about, yes, I do enjoy that kind of thing. And I do think that's like a big draw here. Yeah. Do you think you got to be that kind of person that enjoys that, like tinkering and like dicking around to like, like get the, would would, th- would this be, would you recommend this to Steve? Because I think Steve has said up front, like he doesn't like just dealing with the bullshit. Is it, is it easy or? Yeah, I think ultimately, yes, because it's like I just said, if he doesn't care about any of that kind of stuff, I like that we're talking about him like he's not here. If he doesn't care about any of that stuff, (laughs) he doesn't have to. He can just play the game and it's probably just going to run like it does on PS4 and then that's it. And that's fine. That's probably fine for most people, you know. Steve's been listening, and this already sounds like a lot of uh, jump, jumping around and doing things. Not as bad as uh, Kevin's machine, but I'm like, I don't know. I still have a lot of games to play. Do I really want to spend my buy tax refund on something I got to <laughs> tinker around with a bunch? <laughs> you don't really have to tinker around. I mean, like, you can if you want. But I will I, – I, actually, that's a good segue because I do want to talk about the things that I did have to tinker around with a lot, and that would be games that are – unsupported on Steam Deck because I found really quickly that just because a game says unsupported doesn't mean you can't download it and try to run it anyway. They won't stop you. They'll say, hey, this game isn't supported. You can try if you want to. Okay, sure. Yeah. And I've come to find there are plenty of games that say unsupported but actually do work on Steam Deck perfectly 100% fine. And one of them is Doom. Or should I say the newly issued Doom, like the Bethesda versions from like the, you know, from late last decade when they got when they bought ID software. I I bought a ID pack on like Steam in like 2008 or something like that. So I've been like grandfathered into like all those Bethesda versions. So I have them. And Doom 2 says verified on the store, but Doom 1 says unsupported. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. They're running under the exact same shell. Why would why would it say that? So I downloaded Doom. It runs perfectly fine. I played the entire first chapter of the game. What is that? Six levels or something? Not a single hitch. So I have no idea why it says that. They probably they probably figured if you had to ask, they probably would have been like, what, are you stupid or something? Of course, it's going to run on here. Doom runs on everything, you <laughs> dumbass. Exactly. That's why it was so weird that it said that. I was like, why, okay, why should we have why should we have to tell you that, you idiot? <laughs> <laughs> it, it just didn't it just didn't make any sense, you know, and so I tried a bunch of other games that said unsupported and I've had various results like King of Fighters 13 
did not work at all. It crashed after like the logo splash screens after it said like SNK play more or whatever. So I was like, okay, that doesn't work. By the way, this is the old King of Fighters 13 from like 2013, not the new online version they put out like a few months ago. I'm sure that that version is on Steam and I'm sure that version works just fine. Um, Lost Planet Extreme Condition, the Xbox 360 classic, also on PC, works perfectly fine with no issues. It said unsupported. But Capcom's having a big sale right now, and it was $3. And I was like, I'm going to try to play Lost Planet. Works perfectly fine. I have no idea why it says that. So, yeah, Kevin, it's weird. It's like it, some games will say that, and it's like it's best to look in the community forum and say, like, hey, this is is this actually unsupported or not? Because yeah. a lot of people will have that question. You, uh, more often than not, you'll find that it just works fine. It's it is a little surprising. You would think something like Doom, like if it works, they're gonna tell you. <laughs> like like how like what what is, what do you think the 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 reasoning is for for popular stuff that works fine with that's not saying it's supported? Yeah, well, maybe it didn't work at first. Maybe there was some issue, and then it started to work. But again, why wouldn't that just be updated? It's a big game, uh, right? And Doom Two says verified. So why wouldn't Doom what? I don't know. Maybe they just forgot to update it. It's weird, but it works. On the flip side of this, there was a game that said verified that didn't work, and I had to fix it myself, and that was Geometry Wars, the the Xbox 360 classic that everyone tested their HDTVs with, and now that I wanted to test this OLED screen with, and I'm glad I did because it's pretty as hell still. It holds up. But it just did not run at the Steam Deck's native resolution i it the game would load but it would be at you know 640 by 480 or something disgusting that i wasn't gonna play on a, on that kind of screen i mean i did so <laughs> chunky it was awful so if you go into the options to change it to 1280 by 800 the game soft locks you can't do anything okay it's so great so i looked on the forums the community forums for the game thank god steam has such a big community and that's a great thing steve actually if you're if you're really scared of this stuff you may or may not want to tinker just know that there's always a solution out there because Steam is probably the biggest platform in the world. Someone's figured it out and it's right there. Yeah, you may not like the tinkering, but like you can fix it. And in this case, I could fix it. Someone had this rather complicated fix is one of those things where you have to go into the XML file and enter a bunch of values, numerical values, including the resolution <laughs> and whatever. And it was just like it was a... I don't want to say it was a pain in the ass. You know, it's as easy as opening up a text file and entering a few things. I get that not everyone may want to do that, but it does work. And now I can play Geometry Wars at the re- correct resolution perfectly fine on the Steam Deck. It's great. So, like, that's worth it to me, especially since the game costs like $2. It's fine. Even if it didn't work, it'd be like, okay, what's two bucks? Two dollars and five hours of light programming. <laughs> five hours and t- <laughs> ten minutes of light. T- ten minutes, not even. The interesting thing is, Kevin, this game works on Steam Deck uh, OG. It only doesn't work on OLED, but it's that's why it says verified. It's because it Did works on the other one. Did you find out why that is? Because that makes no fucking sense to me. I don't know. I, I I looked all around. I it, the, the the two systems should have the exact same guts as the same power. Well, so, yeah, there's no resolution difference with the screen, right? No, they're both 1280 by 800. But yeah, it works on yeah, the OG scene. Uh, yeah, I have, I have no idea why that would happen. Right? Could it be? Could it be linked to to, to like a like refresh rate thing? Yeah, maybe. But I also didn't try to run it above 60, and I'm glad you mentioned that because that's one thing OLED has that the original does not. The OLED screen has a max refresh rate of 90 hertz. So if a game can run that well on Steam Deck, you can run it at 90 frames a second. The old one has a max of 60. And I did employ the 90 at times. Um, I'm not sure that I did on Geometry Wars. But again, for people who don't want to fuck with that, uh, just leave your shit at 60 and that'll be fine. If you want to turn it down, a game's running too shitty. Do you want to lock it down to 30? You can. It's as easy as pressing the uh, button on the right and turning up and down a slider. It's great. You know what else Steam Deck has that I didn't expect it to have? It has all those like you guys have seen like the graph things on like PC spec performance. It shows all the cores being used and how much RAM yeah. is being, you know, you can actually do that on Steam Deck if you want. I don't know why you would want to. I mean, like, look, you guys think I'm anal about like frame rate. Even I don't turn that shit on. 
Okay, so like that's that's too much for me. But you can you can have it be as simple as like a little FPS counter in the in the top corner or like the whole shebang. Like I talked like the entire graph and everything. So it's you can do that if you want. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's mostly for for YouTubers doing benchmarking. There, there's issues. I think sometimes I ran into this with um with Dolphin on the Retroid, where um you can turn on multi core performance, but there's there's like a glitch um where you have to like turn it off and back on for it to actually enable. For so for stuff like that, for troubleshooting, it might be handy where you can actually like see what cores are actively in use, and if you want to like, um, I'm sure there, there's like CPU temps and stuff in there. So if you can, because I'm sure on the Steam Deck you can probably go in and like adjust fan curve and shit like that too. You you. You probably can. I haven't seen that, but like you can do all sorts of shit in the in that in that same menu with the overlay and like the FPS um, lock downer thing <laughs> slider. Um, you can. There's also like a thing that says like completely uncork frame rate, so you can just see whatever it'll run at. You can also do like variable rate shading, so if something's running a little bit too shitty, you can turn on that to like save on performance. There's there's a lot of global performance options that you can do that that will help you that is very good for a handheld like this where things aren't necessarily built to run on it so it's great that it has that i do want to talk about emulation and desktop mode as Kevin mentioned real quick, because it's part of the reason why I got this is that it, because it's so super duper easy to set up emulation on this thing. Um, I'm not going to go through all that process because, again, it's it's not much to talk about. You just go to a site and installs it all for you, whatever. You can do all the emulation you want on your Steam Deck. But first to do that, you mentioned desktop mode. That's what you have to boot into. I swear to God, I didn't know this existed. There's a full ass like OS Linux OS here. That's just literally just like, you know, a, de- a full ass desktop. You do whatever you want. I did not know that it existed. I thought this was just a thing where you could just browse Steam and download some games. I wasn't expecting anything like that. Did you guys know this was here? I, I knew that was there. And I think it would be I, I'm sure you have to have that for for a lot of like troubleshooting things. I, I feel like it would be be an issue to not have that capability. Yeah, I, I guess it just never occurred to me that something would be necessary like that, Steve, but I'm glad it's here. I, I thought I was going crazy because I feel like that's what they were always selling you. Like, it's a computer, but, you know, don't 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 tell anyone that we put all this shit on top of it. <laughs> it is, but I didn't I didn't realize it ran in game mode originally and then you have to switch to desktop mode. But anyway, it's just nice because you can just use this to download, uh, excuse me, archive video games <laughs> as as you would uh, and just pop them in your folders and and you're good to go then you can go back to game mode or i guess you could run the emulators from desktop mode if you feel like but like it's just great i know i haven't tried this but i know there's a way people got their games to work from gog like on desktop mode well there's there's a good chunk of people that actually install windows on steam decks as well so that I mean if you have windows installed you could definitely do that. Sure. I guess you could, huh? I I feel like that's a bit much for me. I don't think I would ever I don't know. I can't imagine a reason why I'd have to install Windows. I mean, maybe if one game I really wanted to play didn't work. But then again, <laughs> I have to go to the trouble of installing fucking Windows on this thing. And I, I see that's too much tinkering for me. I, I'm not I'm not dual booting or whatever. But yeah, just, you know, using real ass Firefox as I always would and just watching YouTube or MLB TV in another window while I archive some games or whatever, just just like I would on my laptop. It's great. I honestly didn't know this kind of functionality was here. I was, you know what I was dreading, guys? I was dreading like, okay, I got to hook up the Steam Deck to the computer and transfer some files and make, hopefully they work. Oh no, this emulator doesn't work. Okay, it's time to hook it up again and, you know, do some, you know, like some, some bullshit like that. That's what I was afraid I was going to have to do. Why would that be the case in the age of the internet? I have no idea. I didn't know there was desktop mode. I just thought maybe like you, you, all you could do was Steam in the Steam store, and that's it. I just, I just didn't really know. Hmm. I mean, how else would I get the stuff on there if it wasn't like you know to try? I thought I'd have to do some sort of wild tr- file transfer. 
Well, there's that micro SD card you brought up before. I did, but I'd have to like buy. I mean, the only one I have is in the Switch. So I, I don't think I would buy a whole card just to archive stuff. So, I mean, maybe I would if I really did it a lot. Anyway, it, it's fantastic that the, all of this exists. Um, before Before I shut the fuck up, though. I want to talk about some of the games I tried on here real quick, and I'll just breeze through a bunch of them. One of them was Tomb Raider 1 through 3 Collection. And I tried this because I wanted to try a brand new release as like this Tomb Raider Collection came out the day I got the Steam Deck. It was released that day. So I'm like, you know what? Perfect. I'll try this. I know it's not going to be super taxing. And I was correct. Runs perfectly. 90 frames a second. Looks great. Feels great. It's runs like a dream so obviously these games now take steam deck into account even if it didn't i'm sure it would run perfectly great on here and it's it's fantastic but then you have to play tomb raider <laughs> i know and not, not everyone's into those old tomb raiders but honestly i like i like that slow uh, lumbering gameplay and auto aim and that kind of jank i really do like those old <laughs> games i do you know i love you know i love like early ps1 like trash basically <laughs> so you, you know it I, so I i love wallowing around in that stuff so and, and kevin likes uh memory cards with uh unfortunate looking uh lara croft movie sticking out of them so, yeah you know. th- there's there are benefits to tomb raider i guess i will give you that <laughs> unfortunate i think that's very fortunate that he found that kind of memory card <laughs> so uh, i also I found- you ever see one recently they're not they're not, i don't know yeah you you, your imagination was doing a lot of heavy lifting back then <laughs> yeah because i was 15 and you know a lot imagination went a long way so you know i'm i'm just saying I don't care who you are. If you rub some hard plastic boobies, it's it's pretty good time for anybody. <laughs> I'm a simple man. Uh, yeah, we are we are also Steve's trying to act like he's above it, but you know he yeah. <laughs> That's all. I'm just saying. Um, I also tried Dynasty Warriors Seven because I wanted to try something I was familiar with, and what what more am I familiar with than fucking Dynasty, right? And I wanted to try something from an age when these types of PC ports weren't nearly as considered, right? They're just kind of plopping it on PC. Okay, here it is, and. The Steam Deck compatibility section had a warning about text would be hard to read, as I mentioned before. And yeah, some of it is hard to read, but I chalk that up to like the era of developers not really knowing what to do with a high definition UI yet, where some stuff was just too fucking small just because they could. And it's like, hey, I can't read this. Also, the PC version of Dynasty 7 has no official controller support. The keyboard button prompts in the game. It's like, press space bar to get on your horse or press tab to look at the map or whatever. Obviously, I'll throw that all out the window. You're playing on a handheld. And, you know, you're going to press what you're going to press and just figure it out. It's Dynasty Warriors is not going to be too tough. But yeah, other than that, it ran like a dream, played just fine. So then I wanted to try Prince of Persia Sands of Time. And... I tried this because after Dynasty Warrior 7, I was like, okay, let's take it back to something even older from an even further era of PC ports. You know, back when controller options were really non-standard and really, you know, just not a thing. And so Sands of Time does run. But using a controller, or in this case, the Steam Deck, is kind of an issue at first. So the game doesn't support it natively. And the auto solution Valve puts over any game that doesn't support it natively didn't work. I just couldn't control the game at all, menus or anything. So thankfully, like I said, the Steam community is huge. It's as easy as looking at the controller options and looking for community bindings or mappings. And there it is. Someone made a binding for a controller for Prince of Persia in the Sands of Time. So like if, as for any game that has any notoriety, someone out there has made a controller binding for it. So you don't have to do it yourself. I also tried Halo Master Chief Collection because, you know, I don't know why, but I just figured this would be like the perfect kind of game for Steam Deck. And Kevin, I was right. 100% correct. This is the perfect kind of game for Steam Deck. Runs like a dream. All the Halos are there. I got it for like $8 or something. It was a Microsoft sale when I got the thing. So I'm like, sure, I'll try that. And it it, it worked great. Yeah, that's a win. Yeah, real real good stuff. I have I've played... I played Halos as they came out, just like the campaigns, because on Friends Xboxes mostly. So it's good revisiting. Also from that Microsoft sale was Sunset Overdrive. It was, <laughs> which, I, which I know Yay. is a is a very 
interest to Kevin because it's one of his favorite things. He's talked about on the show plenty of times. And I've never played it because I never had an X-Bone and I've always wanted to. And here's the thing. I didn't see before I bought it, Kevin. Sunset Overdrive is unsupported on Steam Deck. Oops. Uh. <laughs> so I was like, fuck it. What's the worst that could happen? So I boot the game. And after a very, very lengthy setup sequence, I was like, oh, my God, is this ever going to boot? But eventually it does boot. And I get to the title screen and it gives me a message that says my save is corrupted. This is impossible because I've never played the game before. So I, <laughs> I should not have a save that can be corrupted. However, you go to continue and look at your six save files. Sure enough, one of them says corrupted save. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? I didn't even play the game yet. So I went to one of the slots that said new game. I played through the entire game just fine. It didn't have eight, 800p resolution. The best I could do was 768. So I played it at that. So it was a little chunkier than I wanted, but it was fine. It ran at 60 frames a second pretty flawlessly. Um, yeah, it it was great. It was, it was a pretty good game. I have my issues with it. There's a lot of there's a lot of pros. There's a lot of cons. But yeah, I played the entirety of Sunset Overdrive, even though every time I booted the game, it said my save was corrupted. And I just left that corrupted save there. I was afraid to delete it just in case, like, yeah, it would mess something else up. The next a, save is corrupted. It was a load bearing corrupted save. Yeah, exactly. So I just <laughs> <laughs> so I just I just left it there and, and it worked fine. Um, real quick, Are we going to talk more about Sunset? Set overdrive on fine time at a later date. We can if you want. You can. De- we can definitely we talk should. about that game. Yeah, I, w- I would like to. We can. We I can would say your rights are valid, so it'll be. It was a pretty. It was a pretty good game gameplay wise. Um, yeah. I tried uh, just a few more things. I tried Fallout Three just because I figured those old open world games can be really jank and run really jank on various things. So I figured Fallout Three would be a perfect thing to try. And I'm happy to report Steam Deck handled this game beautifully. Performance was flawless areas loaded almost instantly there was no extra jank that wasn't already in the game already i guess this is what i'm well. trying to say <laughs> um obviously it's fallout there's jank but you know what i mean i ran it on max out settings outside of the 800p resolution of course and it had no problem running this it was it was great and i just want to say pretty much all the games i tried from this xbox 360 slash like ps3 era all of them ran pretty much flawlessly. I tried Bayonetta. It was perfect. I tried, again, Dynasty Warrior 7. Perfect. Killer is Dead. Perfect. Um, Lost Planet. Uh, Sonic All-Stars Racing Transformed. Enslaved Journey to the West I tried. Um, I tried Borderlands 2. I tried Sonic Generations. I tried Dead Island Riptide. All of them ran like pretty much flawlessly. So if you want to play anything from that era on a Steam Deck, you're in for a great time. It is going to run beautifully. And one more thing I want to mention, and I promise I'll shut the fuck up. One last game I want to mention is Detroit Become Human, or at least a demo. There was a demo of it. So I'm like, okay, I can use this as a benchmark. And of co- I wanted to try something from the PS4 era that was like really high spec, that was like really pushing the system, something that I knew the, the Steam Deck wouldn't necessarily be able to handle all the way. And I just wanted to see if I could even try to run it at 60 frames a second. Guys, no, I could not run a high spec PS4 game at 60 frames a second on Steam Deck. It did not work. The performance in Detroit was all over the place. It could have been a bad PC port. I don't know, really know the quality of this port, but I ser- I sincerely doubt it. I think it was just the Steam Deck. So yeah, these kind of games at 60 are probably not feasible. Kevin, I'm thinking like stuff like Horizon Zero Dawn or like Spider-Man or maybe like Final Fantasy VII Remake. I seriously doubt yeah. I could get those to run like 60 on a Steam Deck. It just doesn't seem possible. And, and and this is fine because that's not what I got the device for anyway. But I'm mentioning this just because some people may want to get a Steam Deck to have like a PS4 Pro like experience like in your hands. And if that's what you want, this will work beautifully for that. And this will probably run it the same the same way they do on that system. I have a PS5, so I'm not really going to play games like that on here. I'm just going to play them on PS5. But if that is something that you want, just know that you can basically have a handheld PS4 Pro if you want to, which is pretty stupendous for 550 bucks. Um, 
yeah, that is it, guys. I'm sorry for blabbing so long. I've talked for way too long about the Steam Deck, but that that is about it. Unless you have any uh, AMA, we I can shut up. Oh, I just I I like this side of Andre the the, the, the tinkering and yeah, I like this. We got to we got to get Steve into something like this. I'm gonna get him a soldering iron for Christmas. Nah, nah I'm I'm gonna stick to my uh, smoker. Thanks. <laughs> That's not a video game, <laughs> you silly. <laughs> I, I, I do enough tinkering and, and interacting with forums on there. Thank you. <laughs> oh, please. What are you going to smoke next? Give us a sneak preview. Is it a meat? Is it a cheese? Oh, Is it a nut? I hope so. It, 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 it's the temperature spiked. I can't do cheese right now. Okay. I, I wish I had. I, 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 yeah, I don't know. What's next? Have you something tried? Good. Have you tried an exotic? Not exotic, but have you tried like lamb or something or like? Not yet. Would you? I'd is that a? Like, is that like a? To. Is that an interest? Like, would you try like a? Sure. Okay. Can you smoke bacon? Uh, I'd probably have to do the whole slab as is. <laughs> There's only one way to find out. Have you tried brisket? Nah, uh, brisket's been super pricey since I got this thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with our listener mailbag. You guys answered so many questions. We're going to try to get to them all. I'll be right back. Woo! You're coasting with Fine Time. We are back and we are here to answer your questions as always. Thank you for sending so many questions. We're always kind of blown away that a little show like ours gets a bunch of uh, people participating in this, but it's so much fun for us to do this. So I'm glad we got a bunch of questions. So let's start here. And I guess we could just take turns of reading them off however we want to do it. Uh, but I'll start. So first question, Patrick asks from Discord, friend of the show, Patrick, been on the show a couple times, talked Dead Space and Alan Wake 2 with me, if you remember those episodes, and thank you if you do. He asks us, what's a game that's objectively terrible by any measure that you love anyway? Oof. You guys you guys say you were uh, – Steve, go ahead. What's the game you love objectively terrible well, I've already been on this show talking about Deadly Premonition and Deadly Premonition 2. Objectively god-awful games. We could all look at my uh, Twitter account and see some of the worst functioning game there ever is trying to do its best anywhere. I Now that I think about it, I don't know how that would even work on Steam Deck. I know you can get those on Steam Deck, but I don't think they're going to solve those problems on there for you. Oh, no. It's just going to have to be Jank City. But... but Despite all that jank, I, I love those fucking games, and everyone needs to play those games. And I want Deadly Premonition Three. Damn it! <laughs> I, I want more. G- give me more of this stupid, stupid jank. <laughs> uh, Sweary sixty five is on Blue Sky. Maybe you can bug him uh, for something. Uh, <laughs> maybe <laughs> Kevin. Objectively terrible game that you love. All right, I've got a real soft spot for Lord of the Rings on Super Nintendo, and that's a fucking garbage shit trash game i'm never gonna play all the way through it um but i like the vibe of it it really so we this was a rental when i was a kid and it really captured my imagination and my dad and i uh struggled through a good chunk of this game we put much more time into it than it deserved um (laughs) because it's it is it's a bad bad game but I still like to occasionally pop it in for like half an hour and just wander around and hear the music and it looks nice and, and it's it's a nice warm nostalgic place for me. But yeah, shit game. Do, do not play it. Kevin, I've seen footage of this. It's it's mostly footage of Frodo walking away while your AI companions get mauled by wolves. <laughs> Can you verify that whether that's the case or not for you? <laughs> that, that may be uh, similar to how the game operates. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I've talked about this game on the show before, 
And it's funny earlier that we just mentioned that I love like PS1, early PS1 jank. Because that's what Mega Man X7 is, only in PS2 form. <laughs> it's the exact same thing. And I fucking... I, I don't know if I can say I love that game, but I definitely do like it. I really enjoy playing that game. And by everyone's measure, it's one of the worst games of all time, if not the worst Mega Man game. I wholeheartedly disagree for many reasons that I won't get into here. But the 3D sections of that game are not actually bad. They're just highly inappropriate because it's Mega Man. I just don't think you should ever... This should never be a Mega Man game. Again, if this came out in 1995 is a launch game for ps1 it's like okay that's kind of cute we're moving around in this 2d 3d space for ps2 for in 2003 for a Mega Man x game that does not fly and i completely understand i can't help it guys i love i love it anyway i do it's not good at, at all i just i have a soft spot in my heart for this for this bizarre attempt at 3d sections in the Mega Man game i'm sorry you feel that way fuck off (laughs) <laughs> Aaron from at Superpod Saga on Twitter asks if you could make a three man team with characters from any fighting game, which characters would you choose? Bonus points if someone sings the MVC2 fighter selection song, will the other fine time boys make their picks? I oh. am going. <laughs> I was you, just you that, to say, no, no, no. I was just, I was just thinking like uh, we can't sing that because I think Capcom will get in trouble. Even if we hum it, will we still get uh, what's it called? Shazam? Will we still get D- Shazam? DMCA'd? Yeah, DMCA by by Capcom mm. with their Shazam. So let's not. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Aaron. We're too, we're too much of uh, bitches to do that. But uh, let's talk about our picks. Well, I want to hear Kevin's first since he doesn't play fighting games. Yeah, I, I have a prepared statement. Um, I have selected Cammy from Street Fighter, Jade from Mortal Kombat, and Ivy from Soul, Soul Calibur for my team. These characters <laughs> were obviously chosen based on my deep and masterful knowledge of fighting game mechanics, and for no other reasons, I will not be accepting follow-up questions. <laughs> hey, look, it sounds like a sound team to me. Whatever your reasons are, which I will not get into because they are surely personal, I will I will abide by them, Steve. Hey, uh, no judgments for me. I mean, I got a more basic bitch selection of uh, Sagat, Terry Bogart, and B. Orchid. Why B. Orchid? Why not B. Orchid? Just, is it to spite Andre? Maybe. Who can say? Spite? Why would the spite me? <laughs> Well, you know, I got B Orchid on my team, and I know that was, you know, your first love. I mean, you can't come at me with your team of three people if you know if you <laughs> if your lady loves over here, right? I'm playing, uh, I'm playing, I'm playing the meta now. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't mean we can't overlap, but no, I'm not going to choose big B or almost said big orchid. Maybe that's what the B stands for, big orchid. <laughs> She's pretty tall. <laughs> <laughs> we have already had one show in our history named after B Orchid. I am not naming the show Big Orchid. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, we do. <laughs> we can't. We just can't. I'm, I'm I'm saying that out loud, so I'm forbidding myself from doing it. Um, I would make the. I thought about it a little bit, and I would make the Arc System Works Big Boy Team. So I would have Potemkin from Guilty Gear, and I have Tager from Blaze Blue. And since now Arc System Works owns the entire Technos Bat catalog, which includes Double Dragon, that means you can also have a Bobo from Double Dragon. Perfect. Three giant muscle heads uh, doing work. Right. That's that. That's a winning team. Tales from the Backlog on Twitter asks, what game would each host trash the other two hosts in? One game per host to brag about. Uh, I mean, I don't feel that confident that I can trounce anybody in anything. I mean, I always think someone's better than me until I beat them. But I think if either of you guys can beat me in Baseball Stars, I'll give you 100 bucks. Baseball Stars NES, not like Neo Geo or something. If you can beat me, I'll give you 100 smackers. Oh, so this doesn't carry over to baseball stars too? No, 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 none of that. NES. Oh. Where would we archive that at this time of night? I, I wouldn't win at baseball stars, but I would fuck you guys up at any Guitar Hero game. One hundred percent. You got me. I'm, yeah, just I'm gonna, rolling over. Yeah, I, that that ain't that ain't happening for me. I'm getting carpal tunnel just thinking about playing Guitar Hero again. There's a reason why I got stuck with the singing when we played Rock Band. I there's no way. <laughs> I, and I preferred it that way. 
Yeah, anyway, neither of you guys are leaving alive in uh, Penel de Puzzle League, whatever we feel like calling the game with the rainbows and the fairies or the Pokemon or whatever, whatever rising block puzzle game that is the best one to play with a fr- against a person. That you're, you're all getting smushed by me. You're not leaving alive. I'm not even going to try. There's no way. <laughs> I can barely do puzzle mode by myself. I'm not playing another person. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, I'll bend too- over and take it, Steve. <clears throat> yeah, you you take them blocks. The Bits of Time podcast at Bits of Time Media on Twitter asks us, what do you think are the top three video game mascot characters, Steve? Mario, Pac-Man, Sonic. We're done. Yeah, we're done, right? That's it. I mean, Kevin, can you even fuck with that? I'm with you guys on Mario and Sonic, but I think Pac-Man is old. I would, I would honestly take Crash Bandicoot over Pac-Man, and I oh fully understand that Crash is not what he, Crash is not what he used to be, but he gets some very good street cred for being the de facto Sony mascot in the PS1 days. One, one hundred percent. More than Pac-Man. More than Pac-Man. I, I, I just, I, I, I know where you're coming from. I'm just saying you guys are old i would put pac-man over mario and sonic pac-man is the Whoa, video game mascot oh my god pac-man is still getting games today crash bandicoot is in the uh microsoft zenimax uh, vault there and he's it, probably yeah, not gonna crash come is, out again crash is getting some like um predatory dlc on <laughs> crash bash updates and stuff oh wow well, yeah you know things <laughs> just su- 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 supporting his meth addiction you know what? Fuck you. Fuck you guys. I'm I'm sticking with my answer. Yeah. Does Pac-Man have any predatory DLC? I don't think so, Steve. Uh, he, he, probably, he, he does on mobile, but we don't talk about mobile so much okay. on here. I'd probably get, you know what? Unfortunately, uh, we all know about Akira Toriyama passing away. So I, I got Dragon Quest on the blame. I'd probably give the slime from Dragon Quest a runner up spot as, as far as mascots go. If I'm going to do a runner up spot, I would maybe say Bub and Bob. Maybe they're so recognizable. Like maybe Bubble Bobble isn't, or Puzzle Bobble, or Bust a Move, whatever, isn't on the tip of everyone's tongues like it was before. But like, I feel like those two dinosaur little little kids are like. See, I feel like I feel like ours are more recognizable in Japan. Once you get over here, it's like, what the fuck are these things doing staring at us? <laughs> yeah, that's how you get to crash, I guess. Crash Bandicoot. Well, I have, I have a uh, question for old timer Andre. Was Cubert bigger than Bubble Bobble back in the day? Yeah, because I I would guess it was. Yeah, okay, so that's yeah. What, so why would you why would you go with with them over Cubert? Because Cubert hasn't like maintained like games over time. Like you still see games with uh, Bub and Bob in it. Yeah, like, we just had Bubble Bobble forever or whatever it's called on Switch like a year ago or something, or two years ago. Like okay, Qbert, Qbert hasn't appeared since like some monstrosity on Xbox Live Arcade, and even <laughs> even before then, I I think there's I a know. monstrosity on PS One we can download on Royale with cheese. <laughs> that does exist. I completely forgot. I've never played that version. That does exist. Oh my god. This is a great question. Jen A at wordlessly underscore J <laughs> on Twitter asks. What is a game or series you'd like to play but haven't? What's kept you from playing it? Um, I've been wanting to play the Bioshocks since like the day the first one came out. I was really interested in it, but it came out at such a bad time. August 2007 was like Metroid Prime 3, Dynasty Warriors Gundam, and I think like I was still playing Blue Dragon. It was like a super busy time for games, so I just didn't – I think like Super Mario Galaxy was like right around the corner. So I was like, eh, I don't know if I have time for Bioshock. I'll get to it later. I never got to it later. I didn't play a sequel. I didn't play Infinite. I've never played a Bioshock, so I really, really want to. I honestly want to do it for fine time. So yeah, Bioshock sometime uh, maybe this will be the year i always say this will be the year but i truly do feel this might be the year <laughs> uh, again andre i've played two of them they're great <laughs> thank you i thought we were going to do them together but you cheated on me so now we can't oh my <laughs> god not this again <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah for in my case yakuza or like a dragon i guess we're calling it now it would be mine 
Why haven't I played it? Well, at first it's because I didn't really keep PlayStation around, and now it's because do you know how much time I don't have to not play video games? Andre, what order am I supposed to play these in anyway? <laughs> don't ask me. I've only played play them in the order they came out. Is, is there a is is there a hoity toity gatekeepery order I'm supposed to be playing these in? There is, and I know all about it, and I'm trying to shield you from that stuff. You should just <laughs> play them the way they came out. You play them in whatever order you would like, Steve. <laughs> That doesn't sound right either, but oh, the, the Kevin way doesn't sound right. But the way they came out, I don't know if that's even possible. Eh, I'll figure it out someday. <laughs> All right. I've always been Mass Effect curious, and I think that kind of game would be right up my alley. But I, just like the time commitment, because if I was going to do that, I think I would want I would want to do the original three um, at least. And like that would just eat up a ton of time to play other stuff that I, I just do not have. So if I win the lottery or if I avoid uh, ominous heart attack and am able to retire, maybe someday then I will get to play Mass Effect. <laughs> I, th- I think the remastered trilogy ended up on uh, as a freebie for the month once. And that's because that, that's a runner up for this question for me. It's It's interesting. I think for for maybe there's just a thing where, you know, once a series gets to like four plus games, it's intimidating to get into that series at any point. Yeah, it can be. It really depends on the length of them. See, that's the thing. Yakuza is a time commitment. They're not short games, right? So you got to really – it's one thing for me to play all the shitty Uncharted games because they're like, what, six to eight hours? You know what I mean? I can do that. Playing all the Yakuza's, oh boy. <laughs> Poppy the Keaton asked us from Discord. You are walking home down a hospital hallway wearing your podcast t-shirt and a dying man beckons you close. He explains that he only has one podcast's episode worth of time to live and he wants to go listening to your podcast. He asks for an episode that will give him the quintessential experience. Which episode do you have him listen to? No saying anyone else's podcast. This is his dying wish, and you can't refuse it. (laughs) If you try to get out of the question by running out of the room, he will fling a full bedpan at your head. You must give him an episode to listen to. (laughs) Okay, first of all, thank you for doing the voice to read that, as I imagine, like, the Shadowgate text in my head as a kid. That's like what I (laughs) always imagined what that sounded like. So thank you for giving me that. Number two, I love... Uh, Keaton's wild caveats so we actually answer the question which means that other people out here doing mailbags aren't giving good answers y- y'all aren't giving the people what they want because Keaton wouldn't have phrased it like this I'm just saying you guys gotta step it up yeah when you're right you're right <laughs> um, okay so anyway we did an episode on Mega Man and Bass, me and Vin, about a year and a half ago now that I'm super proud of. We explored why the game has a bad reputation because of the YouTube generation and bullshit like that because the the information seems to be received, not actually, you know, gained by actually playing the game. People watch a video of everyone just saying it sucks, and then now the game sucks. So we explored that. Then we exe- then we said why we like the game, and then we defended it against the criticisms that the game has levied against it. I think it came out pretty much perfect, a little behind the scenes. That episode was like two hours, and I cut it down to like an hour 20. I cut out like 40 minutes from that podcast. I was so unhappy with it, and it turned out fucking great. I'm patting myself on the back for saving and editing. Um, so anyway, Steve, uh, what episode of Fine Time would you recommend to the people? Well, not to brag too much, but I'm pretty sure we put in more effort into our After Earth episode than was actually put into After Earth. <laughs> We, we had to do a lot of research, well, into figuring out what the hell happened into that movie visually on a visual level, and the, the answer uh, might surprise you because it sure as fuck surprised me. It <laughs> was that was one of the more bizarre 
researches we've done for a movie episode. It, it was something for sure, Kevin. From from the outside looking in, that was a great episode as well. Okay, good. I'm glad it came off to people who haven't seen it. <laughs> uh, personally, I'm giving my endorsement to ethically sourced Chocobo because I feel like the conversation <laughs> that we had about ethically sourced Chocobo was just so incredibly on brand for fine time. We were we were operating at our highest level when we were talking about ethically sourced Chocobo. We, re- we really were. Yeah. Honestly, we were. I got to pat ourselves on the back for that. Flashback 64. Great podcast. All the guys, all the podcast guys who have wrote in so far, Tales from the Backlog, Bits of Time, everybody. Great podcasts, by the way. We wouldn't accept the answer from a, we wouldn't accept the question from a crappy podcast. So if you made it here. (laughs) <laughs> you, you know you're you're, you're okay with no, us. no 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 let's let's fuck with them okay there's one really shitty podcast that we put a, a question in and all of the rest of the podcasts are really good have fun figuring out which one is, is the crappy one at home <laughs> one, fine, of these fine, things, fine. <laughs> one of these things is not like the other <laughs> um so flashback 64 <laughs> via blue sky asks us Best video game movie adaption. Part of me wants to still say Silent Hill. That's always been the high water mark for me. But now it's got to be the Super Mario Brothers movie, right? It's got to be. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. There's there's not. It doesn't have a lot of competition. It's up against. Yeah, Mario is the current winner for me. But we had a lot of nice things to say about uh, Dynasty Warriors and early find time available where your podcasts are. You know, if you want to scroll to our earlier episodes or just watch the movie on Netflix, you should, I think you'll enjoy it. I'm very, very sorry for the quality uh, audio quality of that podcast. I actually apologized up front before this <laughs> before it started. I was embarrassed because I had all the wrong settings on. Totally my fault if you listen to that old episode. Um, yeah, Dynasty Warriors was fucking fantastic. Honestly, it's almost cheating because you know. Oh, and I'm not going to get into that now. <laughs> Are you sure? I mean, we are on a podcast where we say things and you, uh, well, you know, we, 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 we go into it at length in that episode, but you know, Dynasty Warriors is more of a martial arts movie than a, you know, video game movie that, you know, they had a lot to, you know, just work with and they did and they did good. It was, it was great. It was exactly what I wanted it to be. Friend of the show, Evan Triptonic on Twitter asked. If you were held at gunpoint and told you have to beat an entire game, no death or it's lights out, what would be your best shot at survival? No cheesing the question by picking a game that doesn't have deaths. Again, Evan, who the fuck do you think we are? We're not going to cheat your question like a bunch of assholes. We are men of the people, baby. The people demand answers and we will give them answers. Okay, not a bunch of bullshit. See all the other show. Uh, uh, no, I already called you guys out. Never mind. I don't need to say anything else. <laughs> yeah, let me just uh, give me a second to throw away my Wario Land 2 answer. No, I'm just kidding. And <laughs> I'm assuming this does mean uh, no game over conditions allowed, in which case I'll just play Earthbound and enjoy the ride in a darkened room by myself for however long that takes me to finish. If even one death of a character is not allowed, then Mega Man X. I'd have to skip the Hadouken, but I'm fairly confident that I could play that without deaths if I don't showboat too much. I think I could beat Dragon Spirit without dying if I tried really hard. The NES version, of course. The new Dragon Spirit, the new legend, not the arcade game. If I had to do the arcade game, I'd be dead. I'd already be dead. So, yeah, I could beat Dragon Spirit, the new legend, probably without dying. I feel fairly confident, Kevin. All right. I'd be pretty confident to run through Golden Sun because the last time I played that, it was a fucking cakewalk without doing any grinding. So I think I'd be fine with that. Pretty sure I wouldn't break a sweat running through Link to the Past without uh, coming close to dying either. So either of those, I think I would survive. What if you guys had to pick a platformer, though? What if you had to do something real scary? Like, what is the scariest game you could play where it's like one bad jump could, but you think you could probably do it? Man, I want to say that I could do Mario 3 if I go through and I like Ooh. get all the P-Wings and strategically use them once you get to the like the dark world at the end. Oh, that's I, tough. That's so tough. I've fucking played that game so many times. I, I, I know it well enough that... 
I don't. You don't. You don't think so? It's just tough. I'm like, just thinking you, of myself. You're just toeing the line there. <laughs> I'm just thinking of myself here, like just thinking just one bad slip on a auto scrolling level or something. You know, just like it's just so many things could go wrong. I think. Yeah. Wait, an entire game. Am I allowed to cheat? Because if I'm allowed to cheat, I'm doing no. Mario. <laughs> I'm doing my. I would just do the short path through Mario World, where I go through the Donut <laughs> World, the Ghost House, and then I bust through all of Star Road, and then I'm oh, oh it's Bowser's Castle in 20 minutes. Oh, I win. <laughs> that's not cheating. That's playing the game. That's playing the game as a. Well, don't do that. We're going to get DMCA'd. I told you. Okay, how dare you? Number two, um, I don't think that's cheating. That's playing the game as intended. You're not like, I don't know, doing some sort of code. Triptonic, was that in spirit of the question? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> oh, Mar- Mar- Mario World is probably a better answer than than three, admittedly. I just like you can't like w- again, like Steve said, without like skipping 90 percent of the game, you can't really like cheese it at the end as easy as you can with like a good stash of P wings. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the, the items do make sense in three, but Mario World is generally a much easier game. That doesn't mean that you can't just hit a bullet bill wrong and just fall. See, I'm just afraid of just yeah. some random death, you know, that's just I mean, it, I'm not saying that I'd be stoked if anybody came and said, I'm going to fucking shoot you in the head if you die in a video game. <laughs> so, oh, no, to we're be not, fair, we're so like, thrilled at this you know, none of these are a stress free situation. Good listener on the show. Brooks from Twitter asks. I just don't get the love for Dune. I watched it and I thought it was fine. Are there any movies that everyone seems to love and it just doesn't click for you? Hmm. Steve, Steve, say yours first. You go first. And I wanted to come up with a different answer before recording time and I couldn't, but I hate Avatar. I fucking hate Avatar. I'm sorry, not sorry. I fucking hate Avatar. <laughs> is that all Steve you got? Is I fucking jaded. hate Avatar. You can't even. Yeah, he is. Yeah, and they couldn't. If they couldn't come up with a better mineral than ob- unobtainium to find, then no, I don't have to come up with a better answer. Than oh, Avatar. we're gonna we're we're gonna make fun of fake ob- like objects or minerals in a fucking fictional thing. Are we really gonna go there? Because you <laughs> like a lot of bullshit that has a lot of bullshit names, and I yeah, I, can I go do to. too. But if I do too, but if I came up to a my bo- my imaginary boss and I said, well, they're looking for unobtainium, they would come back to me and say. Uh, maybe that's a little on the nose do better uh i'm okay i'm gonna let you slide this time you you i'm not gonna shame you here on the air kevin what's your the movies that you don't get doesn't click well i will answer i'm i've i'm a little bit got my hair bristled about dune because my dick is really hard for for dune lately but (laughs) i'll still give an answer okay um i don't get the marvel thing and i don't have anything against like superhero movies um but i i have yet to see anything from marvel that i would say is great um like i tried to watch the avengers and it felt so fucking shallow to me ant-man came the closest it was okay um, but like none of the Marvel stuff has remotely near the teeth that the Christopher Nolan Batman movies do to me. I don't know. I, I don't get the Marvel thing. Do you want so? OK, as a Marvel liker, I'm asking you, like, would you want everything to be that sort of like real heavy? Like, I like the Dark Knight trilogy a lot, obviously, but like I don't want that from superheroes all the time. I may I may want that from sometimes and I particularly want that from Batman. Right. But I don't want the I don't want a Avengers movie I mean, to be like that. Personally. It, doesn't, it doesn't need to necessarily have like a dark tone or like serious themes to it. I just everything like even at man, it, it I would say it felt shallow. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy. It felt shallow. I just like it, I feel like they're so like predictable and especially Avengers, because I remember when the first Avengers movie came out and everybody was like, this is fucking so good. Everybody was really into it. And I I was like really curious because I thought like, I feel like I know what this movie is going to be. I'm not interested in it because I know exactly what it'll be. And I sat down and I watched it and it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. Like, I just, I literally do not understand it because it feels just shallow and like, like it's just like they just take ingredients and put them into a machine and say, spit out a Marvel movie and that's what it does I don't know it needs to have some some like depth or like uh like a you know something interesting about it I guess yeah I I hear you 
I definitely don't. I definitely do not want that kind of stuff from a Marvel movie. I I want it to be shallow. So I guess that's exactly what I'm looking for. I I don't want to really think too much. I just kind of want. Again, I don't want like completely mindless like that. That it can go too far the other way. There are bad superhero movies where it's like, okay, this is just like schlock. I'm not really into it or whatever. But I think for the most part, for me, Marvel movies get it right. I think the I think the flip side for me is like I think the DC stuff and see and that's the direction I don't want like with like Man of Steel to me is like one of the worst worst movies I have ever seen I fucking hated that movie I that was the, I've never walked out of a movie that was the one time I considered doing so I hated uh. it. because it was so it was so taking itself so seriously it was so like it was not Superman. I mean, he's causing as much destruction to Metropolis as fucking Zod, if not more. You know what I mean? It's like, aren't you here to save people? I think you just killed all those people in that building by punching Zod through like 40 buildings just because it's a cool camera shot. You know what I mean? It's just like, okay, now that's like too much for me, right? But I think the Marvel stuff hits for me because um, they get the tone right and they get the characters right. And I think that's like the important part. The rest of it doesn't matter to me that much, but I, I completely understand what you're saying. Can can you come up with any of the modern Marvel movies that you would say like that was really great? It had like a unique concept and it really like went the extra mile, not just like Jeff Goldblum was in it and he was funny. <laughs> Um, I mean, that's again, that's kind of what I want from a Marvel movie. So like, oh, by the way, but eventually when there's been fucking 50 of them, eventually you have to like want something different instead of just dipping into the same. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I mean, I, maybe yeah, I, I, mean I, I guess, but it just hasn't gotten that I, old for me, I guess. I, I get what Kevin's saying, because the only two that I could say, Steve, what are your favorite Marvel movies? I, I, I can only really name two wildly different ones. Well, not wildly different, but like they're from very different time periods. There's uh, Captain America, Winter Soldier and Black Panther. All the other ones feel like Kevin feels like they're almost disposable, like you watch it, you throw it away, and then you, you wait for the next one in a few months. And that's fine for, you know, moviegoers and Andre and, you know, most people. That's fine. But I'm like, after a while, then after a while, we go to reach the point we did a while ago where, okay, it's time to do homework now. Now that we, now that you're all trapped. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, we talked about that. I ain't doing the homework. I ain't doing the Disney Plus and shit like that. So <laughs> I will say I did watch Winter uh, Winter Soldier. And that was relatively good. I do think of like m- like current modern Marvel movies as basically like the Avengers and everything after. That's that's when it really like became a like very consistent, cohesive thing. Maybe in in my mind, anyways. Um, yeah, it has. But to me, that's good. Obviously. Um, and you were saying that a movie, one of the movies that you think is like really great in that way that you're talking about. I would say The Eternals. I loved The Eternals. Uh, a lot of people shit on it, and there's a lot of people who didn't like it. it. Didn't do that well at the box office, at least not Marvel numbers. But if I'm going to recommend a like a more recent Marvel movie for you to watch, it's definitely Eternals. I actually think you will like that one a lot. Well, so if you want to, if you're if maybe if I have a rainy Sunday, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have Disney plus or whatever, but like, I, I, I definitely think the Eternals is really good. Um, All right. We do have Disney plus. So maybe I'll queue it up one of okay. these days. Um, as for me, um, just real quick, I don't understand the fast and the furious thing. I never have. Uh, even as they got like more and more ridiculous over time, I get it. It's supposed to be like over the hot top and stupid. I've never thought fast and furious was ever entertaining. I don't think they're bad. I just, I'm like, I don't get it. I never understood. So maybe that's just Cargo me. fast because family. Yeah, it's just <laughs> that that to me is like, I, I don't understand. Have you ever been a Fast and Furious person, Kevin? I, I just don't. Yeah, I really when when the first one came out, I really liked it. I still look back on that one fondly because I think it's so indicative of the early 2000s. Like nothing really quite screams early 2000s like the first Fast and the Furious movie. And then I think I don't remember if it was the fourth or the fifth one. One of the, those ones I thought was was pretty good. Um, and after that, they, it was like i don't know they would not for me the second and third ones too i did not think were good at all but it's it's yeah there's probably a nostalgia thing 
at, at play there, not just like good film. Well, si- since you said that, I have to mention this before I move on to the next question. As I said, on Steam Deck, I've been archiving stuff. And one of those things is Tokyo Extreme Racers Zero, because I've only played the Tokyo Extreme Racers on Dreamcast. I never really played the PS2 ones. And Zero is the first one on PS2 from 2001. Guess what's on that goddamn DVD? A fucking trailer for Fast and the Furious, like the original <laughs> Fast and the Furious. It's there. They put that, that on the disc. Checks out. Yeah. Published by Crave Games or whatever company doesn't exist anymore. Like it they, just enraged you the presence of that trailer. <laughs> no, it didn't piss just me like, off, but like, it's, <laughs> that didn't happen. But as you said, it's so early 2000s. You know, it's so of the time. And I guess the U.S. distributor said, hey, when we're bringing over this Japanese game, we got to put this on here. <laughs> but uh, I also was like 11 or 12 when that came out. So it was, you know, I was I was still relatively gullible. Right. I mean, look, I, I, I understand the appeal. I'm not saying that, like, it's people shouldn't watch it. It's stupid or something. And I definitely don't hate it. Like Steve hates Avatar for some reason. But I definitely don't understand Fast and the Furious. Alex Hearn, GA Rattlesnake on Twitter, asks, I don't understand the massive appeal of Roman Reigns. His world title run has run its course, but I could be wrong. Well, Alex, and thank you for the question, and thanks for listening. I'm going to be honest, but the three of us don't really watch wrestling, so we can't really answer your question as far as like you know the world title angle goes. But as a general consumer of media, I can speak to his massive appeal, and I'll say this, and we'll see what the guys think. I don't think Roman Reigns is going to be like a big deal for years to come, like The Rock or a John Cena or a Hulk Hogan or something like that. I think he's going to carve out more of like a Stone Cold Steve Austin niche, you know, like that guy has this podcast. He's still popular. He's still like around. Right. But he's not like this huge, massive star anymore. I kind of feel like Roman Reigns will settle into that. If you ask me, Kevin. To be honest, I had to Google who Roman Reigns was for for this question. Um, But uh, as I told you guys, if I have any wrestling knowledge to color in when I was younger, I had a a WWE phase and I really liked Rey Mysterio. So I know that contributes nothing to the question. (laughs) I felt like I needed to have like some relevant wrestling thing to say. So Rey Mysterio was my favorite when I was a kid. The only wrestlers I know when I was a kid are from the fucking 80s. Once we got to the 90s, I was like over it. So like I know like, you know, all the 80s wrestlers and that's about it, Steve. Yeah, I'm not going to bore you with 80s wrestlers either, but I think Andre's about spot on. He's going to gonna further carve out that uh, wrestling niche more than uh, I, I, I don't think we'll be seeing a movie starring Roman Reigns like uh the rock or john cena (laughs) well yeah well to be honest i didn't think john cena would get up there either i mean he's massively popular i never thought he would be like this level i mean he's in fucking mortal Kombat playing a character and stuff and like he was just on the oscars naked like a few days ago right like i mean it's just (laughs) he's everywhere thrack 94 on twitter asks are fine time plumbers and do they wear ties steve are you a plumber Look, I'm not doing what I want to do with my life. So, yes, but I don't, I'm not a plumber, but I've been known to do light plumbing at work and at home. I've used a plunger. I've I've played around with it. Well, not play. I've used a toilet snake for its <laughs> intended purpose. And I've been seen wearing a tie on special occasions, not while plumbing. So I'll let you people draw your own conclusions. I would rather be a plumber than wear a tie. I hate wearing ties. Do not like it. So you are a plumber, just not a tie wearing one. Yes. Um, just today, my kids who sometimes uses too much toilet paper clogged the toilet <laughs> with a massive shit and too much toilet paper. And I successfully fixed it. Um, so I also would categorize myself as plumber without tie. <laughs> massive shit. 
I didn't, oh, come I didn't, on. Who among us? I didn't know a 10 year old could take a massive shit. That's all. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. He's getting pretty into like, you know, like sandwiches with extra meat and like that kind of shit. Oh, so, he's, you know, he's he's becoming his his his, uh, his palate is maturing and his shits are maturing. OK. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I screw this up, but uh, Bacule on Twitter asks, what's your what is your guilty pleasure movie? Ah, guilty pleasure. This is always a good question. So, and this is usually my go-to. Anyone remember that Zack Snyder movie from like, I don't know if it's 2009 or 10, maybe 11. It was called Sucker Punch. I remember Sucker Punch. I I remember it being a thing. I did not watch it. So my friends group hated that movie and probably rightfully so. I loved it. I thought it was great. (laughs) <laughs> it's it's a guilty pleasure because it seems exactly like the kind of thing that would piss me off like that type of like wouldn't it be cool if like a dragon came out and then i had two swords and then i killed it and then like we went to like ancient japan and then i you know it just seems like someone wrote a script that way and it sounds awful on the surface but honestly it worked for me i couldn't tell you why I love Sucker Punch. I even have the rated R version on Blu-ray. Ooh, physical media. I'm sorry, Andre. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Andre. Why? That this happened right. to you. <laughs> have you guys ever seen the 2007 remake of The Hitcher? I have not seen it. No. No? Okay. It's at 19% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I will give that it a shallow, <laughs> but I, I do. I love that movie. It's got a very strong aesthetic the entire way through the movie. Um, there is a car chase scene where they play closer by Nine Inch Nails, and it's so fucking epic. It's just done so well. And Sophia Bush in this movie, and she is such a goddamn babe. So good <laughs> God. Yeah, it's a, I, I think it is a good movie. I think it's um like criminally underrated while that what what do people say about it that why do they hate it like i know why people hate i think a lot of it that it's i think a lot of it that it that it's shallow like there's not i mean it's uh it's like a couple on spring break getting um like chased by like a hitchhiking murderer and that's basically the that's that's basically what you need to know about the plot all right steve guilty pleasure my lawyer has advised me to answer this in the spirit of the question (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and 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 nothing is quite as spirited as the Street Fighter movie. Guys, it's bad. It really is bad. John Claude Van Damme as Guile is at his some of his very, very crappiest, but Raul Julia was literally dying out there on the set, and he still kept it together just long enough to be the over the top M bison we could not appreciate back then. We we sure couldn't. I don't even think I do now, but I understand it more. I understand what they were going for, at least as an adult. As like a 12 year old, I was like, this sucks. I don't, <laughs> you know, it's not good. And I would still say that on an objective level, Mortal Kombat, which I pretty sure was like a few months apart from this, is a better movie. But yeah, I think we hate this a little too much. <laughs> We probably do. Um, Mortal Kombat is a better movie, even though they obviously bitched out on the fatalities because it's PG-13. But, you know, at least it has the spirit of it. I think it works in that way. Vin Lucentai, never heard of that guy, asks us on Blue what an, Sky. S- sounds like an asshole. Yeah, <laughs> fuck I mean, Vin Lucentai. I mean, get out of here. Get out of here. Fake ass name. Fake ass name. Are you guys happy with the current Nintendo Switch Online game library and release cadence? Which game, if any, would each of you release in order to really drive the hype on the service? Um, Steve, we are Nintendo Switch Online uh whores i was gonna use a nicer word but whores sounds correct i was gonna say we were enthusiasts (laughs) uh whores is correct i think also so why don't you start tell tell me what you think look i i feel like we've been fairly honest when we do the shows around these apps but it can be better it can always be better but for what i'm paying the amount i'm paying for it it's doing the job i feel like it really is especially if they just move the apps to switch next and keep building instead of starting again from scratch. I mean, what what games, if any? You know, I, I want Earthbound Culminations, you know, Mother 3. But, you know, ha, 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 Steve, stop asking for that. 
one rude that you're judging me from home with that second <laughs> i think my choice really just illustrates that Outside of Nintendo hiring a consortium of wizards at M2 and Nerd to make set to, uh, to make Satellaview happen, most things we want are on these apps. And the things that aren't or you know are likely going to be and or already are, go check your storefronts, reissued by the owners to sell outright. <laughs> that said, it would be the funniest thing in the world to watch something like Evo search for e Eden or little Samson drop on there and watch the sealed game collector market lose its shit, <laughs> which is a good time to remind everyone at home, play the video games, play the goddamn video games, grab the sales, enjoy the subscriptions. There's this, there's treasure out there. Just, just go find it. I love, I loved it. That was my favorite thing. When virtual console started happening is that that was the first thing you'd always hear. Well, the value of this dropped by half or whatever, because it came <laughs> out on virtual console. It's like, I don't care about your fake fucking value of art. That isn't even yours. Fuck off. Like, I don't really give a shit. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, who cares? Anyway, um, Kevin, as, as someone who doesn't play these as much as us. So uh, what do you, what do you think? What could, what could happen on NSO to, to draw? Drive some hype. Yeah, I've never I've never really thought of myself as the audience for this, because for the most part, I've collected physical copies of what I'm really interested in, and I have archived the rest. Um, that being said, I was I was really impressed that they put uh, Ker Kirby Tilt and Tumble on there and they let us use the hardware to play something gimmicky. I would like to see more of that. Um, put put WarioWare Twisted on. That would be super cool. Now pie in the sky if they really wanted to do something like crazy cool can you imagine if they gave us mario kart Arc arcade gp or f-zero ax as a little treat if they somehow made that happen i know i know that would be so good i know but that would um, be great how fucking yeah. cool would that be i would love it man i would love it especially mario kart gp i understand they're like their arcade experiences through and through they don't have the depth of like a real quote-unquote real mario kart it would still be mm. great to have them i've always wanted to play those at home plus it has like fucking pac-man yeah. and stuff i mean come on not crash bandicoot yeah, that would be amazing <laughs> yeah no crash in this game <laughs> Uh, friend of the show, Trey at Internet Trey on Twitter. Um, I know we all have least favorite genres or subgenres if you want to go granular in video games. So I'm curious what each of y'all's is. And just for fun, is there a game in that genre that despite your dislike of said genre, you just love the hell out of that game anyway? I think I'll go first because I find absolutely no pleasure in real time strategy at all. <gasps> there is just nothing for me there. Yes, I know. What a what a surprise you to everybody. You've been cheating on me this whole time. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Every single philosophy behind an RTS is unappealing for somebody like me. And I don't really have an RTS that I like, Trey, but I'm generally not much for strategy, turn-based, or real-time at all. So I guess I could say Shining Forest is a big exception for me in the genre because like, I just don't play games like that. Uh, something like Triangle Strategy just makes my head swim, right? I can play Shining Forest. I'm smart enough to do that, which means Kevin can play it too. So someday I will. <laughs> Quit peer pressuring me. Yep. <laughs> Okay, fine. You know what? I, I, I'm pretty sure everyone's picked up on this by now, but realistic sports sims, your Maddens, your FIFAs, your The Shows, and so on and so forth. And no, not because I can play sports outside. No, not because of that. Just because I, I can't do it. <laughs> I, I, I just can't. <laughs> I, I, I've tried because those games get cheap after you know a few months. And I, I I just can't do it. I'm like, I, I, and because of what they are, I don't have an exception for you. Sorry, Trey. <laughs> don't you fucking hate people like that? You're like, why would you watch sports on TV when you can play them? Or it's like, no, dog, no, I don't no. want to play baseball. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. This isn't like organizing a drawer. I get it. You don't want to necessarily, you know, <laughs> go play a sport. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> I before we go on, I'm I'm with Steve. I don't get the sports sims either and it's not even a gameplay thing i don't know what the hell is going on with the rules for most sports i don't have a fucking clue how football works <laughs> at all i remember playing demos of madden on like ps1 and like then they give you all of these options for the plays i don't fucking know it's just lines on like squiggly lines with little guys i don't know what's going on um now if 
You ha- I was going to say you have to be American to understand, but you get- okay. <laughs> otherwise you can't read it. <laughs> I got to say, Kevin, I can do a little better than that because I can at least play with you at an arcade sports game. Uh, yeah, I'll take Andre on for baseball stars for 100 bucks and probably lose. Tecmo Bowl, let's go. <laughs> Blades of Steel, <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, like back uh, in the Super Nintendo days, Stanley Cup hockey was like the closest thing you had to like a sports sim. And that was pretty fun. I remember playing that when I was a kid and and that I could do. Yeah, the, the, when they were simpler, but now they've gotten really complicated. I agree. They are less fun that they are more complicated. That doesn't mean that I don't like them, but I do I do understand what you mean. Cole from Blue Sky asks, our, our opinion on Palm Pilot games. Um, I hope y'all have had a Palm Pilot in your life because I never did. And also, I never – I don't know any other Palm Pilot games besides Snake. And people used to play Snake on Palm Pilot, right? So I don't, I don't really know anything else besides that. I've definitely not had a Palm Pilot either, but I do love that that kind of stuff exists because if I'm watching YouTube and an LGR video comes up that's titled "The Best and Worst of Palm Pilot Gaming," then that's exactly the kind of thing that I would that I would click on. So yeah, I got to back up, Kevin here because i went from flip phone to smartphone i didn't have a palm pilot you kidding what do i look like some kind of busy executive that was walking around scheduling my appointments i don't i don't have that kind of money you know game boy advance you kidding but uh you know i i would similarly watch the lgr palm pilot game video not not that he needs our advertisement on to you know go make a game (laughs) make that video can i ask you guys a question what the fuck is LGR? <laughs> <laughs> oh, th- that's one of the best YouTube channels. It's la- lazy game reviews. It's a lot of like old computers and like he old finds so and- much crap. <laughs> oh, yeah. He finds Even crap crap crazier than me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, then. Tommy Rain King on Twitter asks us, hello, is there a food you eat that you didn't know was weird until someone told you? For example, I grew up putting slices of cheese on my French toast, and I didn't know that was weird until my college roommates asked me what I was eating. I look forward to hearing your answers to. And that's it. It cuts off. He cuts himself off. So first of all, thank you. <laughs> I, thank I you. hope you escaped from the terrorists. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the oddly truncated question, Tommy. Uh, secondly, I do have an answer for this, guys, and it's untoasted Pop-Tarts. I never toasted a Pop-Tart in my entire life. I've never done it. And I didn't realize that was weird until I went to other people's houses and everyone's toasting their Pop-Tarts. Never done it. Never will. I have no idea why I would toast it. Pop tarts are pretty legit, untoasted. Yeah, it's also in the it's also in the name. What pop pop tarts? Oh, no, like pop. they they pop out of the toaster. Oh, how am I? Supposed I don't to- think that. I don't think. Yeah, that doesn't naturally imply like that's what they're getting at. But people don't intrinsically understand that the pop in pop tart is meant for the toaster. I don't think. I never thought about it that way. That's for sure. Until right now. Wow. It almost <laughs> okay, makes I- me feel. It almost makes me feel bad that I don't have a real answer to this question because I read the first half of this sentence. Oh, that's easy. Pierogies. I felt like and then I read the second half. I'm like, oh, I don't have a real answer <laughs> to this question. <laughs> There's no weird thing. I haven't. You, you, you go ahead, Kevin. I think yours is good. <laughs> All right. I, I have a, I have an answer. And this is cheating a little bit because I knew it was fucking weird at the time. Um, but in the spirit of the question, I feel obligated to admit this. When I was a kid, I went through a phase of melting a cheese slice on just like a piece of bread in the microwave, and then I would just put relish on it and eat it. (laughs) And yeah, I knew I knew it was weird. weird. My parents, like I think my parents even fucking judge me. And it grosses me out to think about it now. I would never eat that, but that was a staple for a while. Um, Also, side note, my wife and I sometimes have peanut butter on toast with a little bit of frank's red hot on it and people will think that's weird but i'm telling you try it because that is fucking good you don't don't put too much frank's red hot just a little bit to to zip it up kevin kevin i'm not i'm not gonna lie to you even that for either one of those things they sound pretty good if you know you slide them in the toaster i don't think i can microwave a piece of bread but if I, if I, you know, you put that in the toaster oven at 3 a.m. and I was, you know, like, because I was high or whatever. Yeah, that, that's, that, that <laughs> sounded pretty okay. It doesn't sound terrible. It's definitely the best thing we talked about so far. 
You guys don't think that like like the micro the microwave is what kills it though? Uh I just try not to use the microwave so much. <laughs> I just no, I, I I guess it could be okay. I don't know. I would have to try it. It's hard for me to imagine. I guess I would have to actually like eat it. Snack Taku on Blue Sky asks, which video game has the best looking food, which is primarily not a food based game, such as Overcooked. I would argue that Overcooked is a food based game. I mean, like, well, I think that's what he's saying thing. is that that it's the, like that's the example of what you can't. Oh, pick is the way okay, I took it. okay, got no got Overcooked, him. no Panic Restaurant. Gotcha. Um, I it might be a boring answer because I probably said it before. Final Fantasy fifteen food still the goat. I mean, we're that's why we talked about eth- ethically sourced chocobo because we were talking about chocobo club sandwich too. Remember in uh, Final Fantasy fifteen? Final Fantasy fifteen has the best food I have ever fucking seen. It's been what? It's almost what? Almost ten years old now. Getting to be almost yeah Probably. jesus christ that game looks incredible as far as well still looks good in general but that food steve holy crap yeah final fantasy 15 is untouchable and it's cheating and i think i recall bringing up in another conversation how appetizing the cheesy and sunny food lines of food and tears of the kingdom looked so i'm gonna pivot to pokemon scarlet today it's not the best looking in terms of fidelity, but between the fun sandwich building tune that I'm not allowed to hum or we might get, you know, canceled and uh, some of the very Dagwoodian abominations I built really makes me wish the deli I went to forever was still open. Rest in peace, corner heroes. There's nothing left out here even close. Are you just going to end on that note? That's how you're going to stop? What are you doing? <laughs> that was really sad. You just made, we were talking yeah, about it. Was sad. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Kevin, bring us back around. <laughs> All right. I'm in a, in a shocking turn of events. I'm also going with Pokemon. Um, when I played Pokemon Yellow when I was a kid, I had it in, you can get lemonade and you don't even see the fucking lemonade, um, but I had it in my head. <laughs> That the you know I don't know for what and maybe they like described it as like you know it's like super fizzy and refreshing or something but I I remember being a kid and just being like fuck that lemonade sounds good um, <laughs> that's so weird they don't show it <laughs> yeah I don't know it's just I mean but maybe Steve can enlighten me was did they like make a big deal of the lemonade because I remember like idolizing the lemonade <laughs> well well you might remember they sold it in a vending machine along with soda and water with equally pretty refreshing sounding descriptions and uh since pokemon yellow they've they've included in illustrations over time which i'm definitely going to share with you over discord now that we're done we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna does close, it look really good it looks good enough to we're, we're gonna close the loop kevin you're, you're gonna see the lemonade wow okay the lemonade has been depicted. a lifelong dream fulfilled were you doing like association thing like pokemon yellow like yellow lemonade like were you like just in like see i don't think so because to be honest i envisioned it to be pink lemonade i think mm, okay interesting i do like yeah. pink lemonade as i well. don't know i wonder i need to go back and see what the description was because obviously it really like turned me on to that lemonade all right one mr wyatt sinclair wyatt's wicked goods.com on blue sky order those fucking cookies by the way go to wyatt's wicked goods.com i've ordered those cookies at least three times they're great I've ordered different things each time. Oh, All of them. What's are great. the what's the deal with this? Is it like it's like a home bakery, or yeah, yeah. He bakes his own cookies at home and ships them out. They're so it's, cool. It's really good stuff. Yeah. So he asks us. He asks us two things. But let's start with this. What is a food? Maybe like a fast food item or just something homemade that you thought would be an absolute home run, but ended up disappointing you. And I'll take this one. Okay, first. go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Do it. My all time favorite, like limited time type of fast item, fast food item is the bacon mushroom melt at Wendy's. Do you guys have this in the States? Is the bacon mushroom melt a thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've heard of it. Okay. Yeah. So this uh, first came out when I like probably when I was in high school, I think. And then eventually years ago, at some point, they tried to jazz it up to the portobello bacon mushroom melt. And I love the bacon mushroom melt. So I was pretty excited because they like like had commercials, you know, saying this is like the upgraded portobello bacon mushroom melt version. And it's way, you know, way better. And I was real. Yeah, I was I was stoked to try it. I, I think I like intentionally like made a trip to go to Wendy's just to try this. Um, 
and it was a downgrade and it's always been the portobello bacon mushroom melt ever since then for years and it's still pretty good if i'm around wendy's and they've got the bacon mushroom melt i will still eat it but i yearn for back in the day bacon mushroom melt the the og legit real bacon mushroom melt with like because the cheese was like it was like fake ass cheat like liquid cheese <laughs> yeah. didn't, they didn't try and like they didn't try and like like what who are you pretending you're fancy with like cheese with like herbs and spices in it at wendy's <laughs> fuck off yeah when i go to I'm, I'm with you on that kind of stuff when i go to wendy's i want some fake ass cheese honestly that's what yeah. i want yeah you, do you guys want to hear a really really hot life hack because i've been doing this for years and it's so legit at wendy's you can get so, so that you can get the cheesy cheddar burger, um, but they have that liquid cheese sauce. And if you ask just for a container of it, they'll give it to you. And it's like 35 cents and you dip your fries in that cheese sauce. It is the tits. So good. Yeah, I've done that before. Not specifically ask for the cheese sauce, but like I've had a cheddar whatever burger and I've dipped my like fries in that like sauce that spills out or whatever. So I have done that. Oh, I've for- never I've never thought to actually like ask for the sauce. Yeah, every time I go to Wendy's, I get the side of cheese sauce for my fries, and I love it. That sounds great. I'm going to have to do that from now on now. I guess I'll go next. So since I'm out west, Jack in the Box is a thing here. And Kevin, you don't have Jack in the Box, right? It's not It's not up there? We do not. Okay. Nope. Because I, I figured you're far enough west to have it, but just not in – this is probably just not in Canada. So if you don't have Jack in the Box where you are, their signature burger is the Jumbo Jack. And I want to say almost like 10 years ago, they introduced a new version of the Jumbo Jack called the Buttery Jack, which is like a classed up version on like a better bun and it has better cheese, as Kevin was talking about. That's not always a better thing, but it did. It had like more expensive cheese, like actual Swiss cheese and not like the fake ass Swiss cheese or whatever, I guess. Um, and as the name implies, they hit it with some garlic herb butter. You know, kind of just before getting it off the grill there. So it's a buttery jack, not a jumbo jack. That sounds that sounds fucking good. You know, I guess it's fine, but I expected it to be better. And that's why I mentioned it today. It was just it was totally fine. I guess it's like juicier because it has butter and you do. But you, I think my problem is you. It, the, the garlic herb butter doesn't impart a whole lot of flavor. Like you would think like it would be. I don't know. It just doesn't hit. You know how you ever have a steak where you have like garlic herb butter on it or something like that and it really adds to the steak or whatever. It it doesn't mm. it doesn't feel like that on the burger. I don't know. It just doesn't come off the way I thought. So it was kind of disappointing. It's still on the menu. These are introduced in like 2015 or whatever. They're still there. So I I mean, look, I guess they're popular if they stuck around for 9 years, right? But I don't know. Do you think it like literally isn't buttery enough? Like when it has butter in the name, are you expecting more butter flavoring, like the butter to have a kick? Yeah, I want more flavor from the butter. And like, cause like, again, when you hear garlic or butter, you're thinking something more like punch in the face, you know? But it just doesn't, it just doesn't come off that way to me. A while ago, Checkers or Rallies, if you're out west, had a bunch of garlic buttery things on the sandwiches. And all I can really remember from that is just, Having this aftertaste of movie theater butter from <laughs> from the burgers is, is is that a problem? Was that a kind of problem you were running with your sandwich? No, no, the butter was not a problem at all. It it seemed like fairly real, quote unquote, real butter. I so, mean, because there definitely wasn't garlic or herb or anything. Yeah, I definitely it. Okay, that's it. It's the garlic and herb. It's not really the butter. The butter is fine, but I just don't get any other flavor from it. And it's just kind of like, I guess it's just a juicier Jumbo Jack with fancier cheese. I don't know. I guess I was just expecting more. Again, though, there must be popular. They're still there. So what do I know? Steve, when you were talking about eating the burger and then having the aftertaste of movie theater popcorn butter, like that to me sounds fairly appealing. (laughs) Am I just, am I I just mean, a fatty? On the, first, <laughs> on, on the first bite or so, yeah, okay, this is neat. But it's like, oh, my God, it still tastes like this. and It just doesn't stop. <laughs> yeah, I guess if that's yeah, what you want, up. that sounds fine. Yeah, I can imagine people liking that. I guess I guess Kevin should order one. Well, he, he can't order one here. The checkers out here are gone. <laughs> um, okay, Steve, uh, yeah. food that disappointed you. 
Yeah, more recent example. Re- recently, uh, Burger King started a build your build a Whopper contest with where they build it with AI. Every, I have lots of problems with this that I'm not going to address today. But to uh, <laughs> promote this contest, they put out a special Whopper of their own, which also tastes like it was built by an AI. <laughs> they got it's got candied bacon with garlic aioli and and some kind of other weird paste thing going on that's supposed to sort of mimic the ketchup texture but oh bacon jam and none of it tastes good none none of these things none of the flavors gel together and none of the individual components even taste good like at all if you guys are really jonesing for a sweet and salty bacon fix right now arby's remembered that they had a brown sugar blt and that's back on the menu and everyone should go run and get that before they remembered oh shit we have something good on the menu let's take it off (laughs) i um i've been seeing that uh brown sugar bacon the blt commercial like 1400 times a day they just cannot stop playing it it's Uh, so good yeah See, I don't like to. I guess I don't have to eat a tomato. I don't really like tomato. I guess I could just have a BL, <laughs> brown it's sugar good. BL. Yeah. Wyatt has one more question for us, and this is the final question of the day. Again, thank you for everyone who sent in their questions. But uh, Wyatt Sinclair at WyattWickedsGoods.com, order those fucking cookies, asks us, you're given a home arcade that can play any arcade games ever made, but you can only choose five to play for eternity. What are you picking? Um, I'm the arcade man here, self-proclaimed, so I guess I'll go first. And these are just the five games that came off the top of my head. I didn't put any thought into this, but I figured first thought, best thought. I said Street Fighter Alpha 3, Final Fight, Rampart, Ray Force, and Ms. Pac-Man. Those are my five. I don't know why those are the first five games that came to mind, but that was it for me. I don't know why Rampart. Rampart is occupies a part of my brain that I don't think we'll ever leave <laughs> so i just I, I i wish that game could be re-released one day it's one of those games guys from the late 80s where um in the early 90s where atari and midway, midway right? were like bedfellows so a lot of those things are tied up like clax rampart like some of them have appeared on like midway arcade treasures back in the day but that was about it i bought one of those to play rampart Anyway, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to throw this into the Rampart show, but I had to <laughs> had to say that. Anyway, um, Kevin, you're you're a lot less arcade inclined than us, so I'm interested to hear your five. Uh, yeah, mine are probably a little bit more basic, bitchy, but I, I very much do love these games. I I, I don't have the uh, the in depth knowledge of Rampart. You do. Um, I would do Turtles in Time, The Simpsons, Gauntlet. House of the Dead and Daytona USA. I don't think any of those are probably a massive surprise. Can't can't fuck with those. I mean, come on, those are no. great. I mean, you got two beat 'em ups. You got, yeah. I mean, what, what can you say? Excellent. It's a good time. Do you have a? I mean, by gauntlet, you surely mean just basic bitch ass OG gauntlet, right? Yeah, like, yeah. like yeah. yeah, yeah. I w- I would agree with that as well. I mean, I've played Gauntlet Legends, and it was it was fun. But- yeah. If we're going to the classic ones, I like Gauntlet 2 a little little more, but yeah, I definitely mm-hmm. for sure. Okay, Steve, five five arcade games for eternity. Yeah, I put in a little thought into this because I wanted like games that I can't play right now or games that would just be, you know, more fun playing at an arcade. So my choices are Wizard of War, Pigskin Foot Brawl, Capcom <laughs> vs. SNK2, Crazy Taxi, and Mad Dog McCree. Mad Dog McCree. You ain't never gonna get me, Sheriff. Sure. <laughs> I, I was okay. C- c- I was embarrassed to play that arcade game because of the way it talked. I was. I didn't want to oh, put orders into but, it. <laughs> it's not good, but I got to do my uh, part in uh, archiving this. And what better way than this monstrosity of an arcade of a hypothetical arcade cabinet that Wyatt has instructed us to build? Remember, remember the weird part of the Wii era where you just got a bunch of light gun ports, including those. Like, yeah, was, I got, I got, I got, mine. I got, I got it somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's. Uh, I regret nothing. But yeah, I played it on that. But yeah, I mean, as a, like a nine or ten year old, I was a little embarrassed to play the cowboy game with real people that yelled at you. So I just didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't really approach it. 
I'm pretty surprised, Steve, that Simpsons didn't make your list. I thought that would have been a shoe. Uh, it was on your list, so I didn't want to double dip. And, uh, okay, and I'll uh, share my I'll share my arcade with you. Uh, and I, uh, you know, Crazy Taxi. I, I know I could play it on a console, but I like the sit down cabinet. Wizard of War and Pigskin Football. When have, when have you seen those? I, last time I played them was at the barcade. Did I tell you guys when Crazy Taxi first came out? This would be like early '99. I fucking put a ridiculous amount of money. I've never spent more more time on an arcade game. I wanted one more, one more. It was at a GameWorks in Las Vegas, and anyone who knows what GameWorks is knows how much it was per pop to play any game there, and there's let alone a new one. And it was like three bucks a pop or something. I fucking Whoa. played a ton of Crazy Taxi. It was, <laughs> it was. I just couldn't stop. I was addicted. There, there was one night at the overpriced uh, game complex thing that's no longer with us. It's a gym now. Boo. But uh, <laughs> they, 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 someone fucked up while doing uh, emptying or recalibrating whatever. And uh, crazy taxis were only one credit instead of the usual two they wanted. And I said I spent a long time just cranking tokens into that <laughs> that night. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes an arcade machine can get you that way. Um, all right, I think that is about fucking it. We uh, again, well, I keep saying it, but thanks for all the questions. You guys are great. Hopefully, when we do this again. We get as many great questions as we did this time. But until then, you can join us on Twitter at Find Time Podcast or check the description of this podcast to find our names on Blue Sky. See you next time. Bye. Thanks for listening to- Uh, Patrick asked from Disco. Patrick asked from Discord. Friend of the show, Patrick. Patrick's been on the show. Why can't I fucking talk, Patrick? I can't say Patrick today. Patrick. Patrick. Someone whisper it to me in my ears. Patrick. Patrick. That's not what I wanted at all. Oh, now we're fucked. <laughs>